I think in one of your slides, you have this nice plot that is one of the ways you show that LLMs are limited. I wonder if you could talk about hallucinations from your perspectives, the why hallucinations happen from large language models and why and to what degree is that a fundamental flaw of large language models? Right, so because of the autoregressive prediction, every time an LLM produces a token or a word, uh, there is some level of probability for that word to take you out of the set of reasonable answers. Uh, and if you assume, which is a very strong assumption, that the probability of such error uh, is that those errors are independent across a, a sequence of tokens being produced. Mm -hmm. What that means is that every time you produce a token, the probability that you rest, you you stay within the the set of correct answer decreases, and it decreases exponentially. So there's a strong, like you said, assumption there that if uh, there's a non-zero probability of making a mistake, which there appears to be, then there's going to be a kind of drift. Yeah, and that drift is exponential. It's like errors accumulate, right? So so the probability that an answer would be nonsensical increases exponentially with the number of tokens. Is that obvious to you, by the way? Like, uh, well, so mathematically speaking, maybe, but like, isn't there a kind of gravitational pull towards the truth? Because on on average, hopefully, the truth is well represented in the uh, training set. No, it's basically a struggle against uh, the curse of dimensionality. So the way you can correct for this is that you fine tune the system by having it produce answers for all kinds of questions that people might come up with. Mm -hmm. And people are people, so they, a lot of the questions that they have are very similar to each other. So you can probably cover you know, 80% or whatever of uh, questions that people will, will ask um, by you know, collecting data. And then, um, and then you fine tune the system to produce good answers for all of those things. And it's probably going to be able to learn that because it's got a lot of capacity to to learn. Uh, but then there is, you know, the enormous set of prompts that you have not covered during training. And that set is enormous. Like within the set of all possible prompts, the proportion of prompts that have been uh, used for training is absolutely tiny. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny subset of all possible prompts. And so the system will behave properly on the prompts that has been either trained, pre-trained, or fine-tuned. Um, but then there is an entire space of things that it cannot possibly have been trained on because it's just the, the number is gigantic. So, um, so whatever training the system uh, has been subject to to produce appropriate answers, you can break it by finding out a prompt that will be outside of the 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 set of prompts has been trained on. Uh, or things that are similar, and then it will just spew complete nonsense. Do you, when you say prompt, do you mean that exact prompt, or do you mean a prompt that's like, in many parts, very different than, like, is, is it that easy to ask a question or to say a thing that hasn't been said before on the internet? I mean, people have come up with uh, things where, like, you, you put a, essentially a random sequence of characters in the prompt, and that's enough to kind of throw the system uh, into a mode where you know it is going to answer something completely different than it would have answered without this. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to jailbreak the system, basically get it you know go outside of its uh, of its conditioning, right? So that, that's a very clear demonstration of it. But of course, uh, <laughs> you know that's uh, that goes outside of what is designed to do, right? If you actually stitch together reasonably grammatical sentences, is that is it that easy to break it? Yeah, some people have done things like you 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 write a sentence in English, right? That has an or you ask a question in English, and it it produces a perfectly fine answer. And then you just substitute a few words mm -hmm. by the same word in another language, and all of a sudden the answer is complete nonsense. Yes. Yeah, so, so I guess what I'm saying is like which fraction of prompts that humans are likely to generate are going to break the system. So the, the problem is that there is a long tail. Yes. Uh, this is a, an issue that a lot of people have 
realize, you know, in social networks and stuff like that, which is, uh, there's a very, very long tail of, of things that people will ask. Mm -hmm. And you can fine tune the system for the 80% or whatever of, uh, of the things that most people will, will ask. And then this long tail is, is so large that you're not going to be able to fine tune the system for all the conditions. And in the end, the system has been kind of a giant lookup table, right, essentially, which is not really what you want. You want systems that can reason, certainly that can plan.